We want to welcome you to King of Glory, to our uh, worship here today, and just a couple announcements. Uh, one is that we mourn with Kay Nikki's sister, Joan Estes' death, and we mourn with Kay and all of her family. And uh, later we will be singing through our sermon hymn and last hymns, first verse together, because those hymns uh, are unfamiliar to us, perhaps a little bit. Please rise as we begin worship. On this Sunday, we gather for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all will know your Son as he is, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing our first hymn. seated for the lesson. And again, I want to let everyone know uh, that we continue with our ministries here at King of Glory, and we are looking forward for your continued 
financial support, and also that we will be singing the first verses of our two ne next two hymns over again. The lesson today is for the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Paul writes, Now concerning food sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Please stand for the reading, if you are able, for the gospel. <clears throat> the gospel reading is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. Mark writes, we, They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and talked. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing, convulsed him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the region, surrounding region to Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Well, uh, girls and boys, hello. This is a message for you today. And uh, wanted to tell you something first. You know, God gave each of us brains so that we could figure out things and know things. You've got a brain. We've all got a brain. Let's see if you know what this object is. You're right. It's a ball. In fact, it's a tennis kind of ball. You are so smart to know that this is a ball and to know many other things. I'll bet God knows Lots of things, too. I'll bet he, God does know. I want you to uh, know a few new things. How many people live on earth right now? Can you guess? You can look it up on the internet. It's a pretty good guess, almost exactly how many. And right now, there are almost 8 billion people living on planet earth. That's a lot of people. When I was born back in 1961, there were far less people on earth then. In fact, less than 3 billion people. More people are being born than are dying every minute. So that every minute, 150 more people live on earth. That's over 200,000 more people living on earth every day. I want to ask you something. Do you think with all those people, almost 8 billion people, that God even knows you? We may, you may think, or I may think sometimes, that God may lose track of you with all those other people here on earth. But in our Bible today, we learn that God always knows each of us. In fact, God has known each of us since before we were born. Wow. God not only knows your name, but God also knows everything about you. And God loves you and has a plan just for you. So let's pray to God to receive God's plan. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we're very thankful that uh, you know us. Help us to know you better and to, to know that you always love us, to, to trust you in all things because you have a great plan ahead for us. Help us to listen in prayer for your plan for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace to you all from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let me start out with a story about myself and what I learned one of the times I messed up a situation from my college years. As you all know, a part of me has always been dedicated to knowing things. 
a wide variety of things to apply to my life and sometimes my conversation. Well, one evening in college, and I lived all four years of college in a Lutheran fraternity house, a friend there, George, at the fraternity, enlisted me in trying to convert his steady girlfriend, convert her from her denomination to our Lutheran denomination. George and I were both LCA back then. So George's girlfriend, Sandy, and I started a conversation one night with George there, which went from being a conversation to being a debate. Looking back on that conversation, I realized that I was not just debating, but flaunting my so-called knowledge, and that I had thought I had come out victorious. But I realized my pride had gotten the better of me when George went to me the next day not to thank me, but to say sorrowfully that I had badly hurt Sandy's feelings. It all turned out okay for those two. They are happily married to this day. But I realized what George was saying. I realized that in playing the expert, I had misused my knowledge and kind of put Sandy down. I went and apologized to her. The Apostle Paul a very knowledgeable man, addresses that very spiritual issue from my story with his Corinthian Christian brothers and sisters in our lesson today. The issue there had been that many in the Corinthian church, all of whom were Gentiles, were being criticized by other Christians for eating food that was dedicated to the temples of other gods in Corinth. Now, to justify themselves, these Corinthians were saying to Paul and others, that it did no harm to eat food dedicated to false gods because they had superior knowledge that all those gods simply did not exist. All of us possess, they had written to Paul, this knowledge. They claimed this knowledge freed them to eat all that scrumptious food at those other temples and do whatever they wanted. But Paul let them know that knowledge and wisdom are not the be-all and end-all of humanity. In this, his first letter to them, he began by laying out the groundwork for what he would later tell them. He wrote to them first, For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom and knowledge. But we Christians proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Gentile Christians, Christ the power of God and Christ the wisdom of God. He continued, for God's foolishness is stronger than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Paul is not really calling God foolish and weak in that passage, but pointing out to us that to our sinful, selfish flesh, the way of God, the way that, that God acts and wants us to act, often seems kind of foolish and weak. But it is the will of God, the will of the God of love, to always act that way, for instance, to be meek. Now, having said that, Paul turned to the issue at hand. He quoted what the Corinthians had told him, that they all possess knowledge, but then informed them of the limits of their ego-driven knowledge. He wrote, now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that as you said, all of us possess knowledge. But knowledge puffs up, and love builds up. Anyone, Paul went on, who claims to know something does not have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. What is Paul getting at there? Well, let us use my behavior in my first story as an example. In flaunting before Sandy, my superior, or so I assumed it was superior, knowledge of church doctrine, I was not not using that knowledge to build Sandy up, but instead using it to puff me up. Likewise, the Corinthians, in the way they flaunted their knowledge that idols were false gods, by eating food sacrificed to these idols in front of others, were merely puffing themselves up. At the same time, 
with enormous insensitivity, they were also damaging the faith of others in their church, fellow Christians who misinterpreted their behavior. For it seemed to these other Christians that by eating these foods, the Corinthians were deserting Jesus and following those old gods again. Today, Paul says knowledge puffs up. But to be clear, the scriptures do not say that knowledge in and of itself is bad. But just like any tool or instrument, knowledge can be used in a destructive way. Individuals have used knowledge for drugs, used their knowledge of drugs, for instance. They've used that knowledge of drugs to become addicted and ruin their lives. There are institutions and governments over the, all over the world that have used knowledge of people's lives to persecute, jail, and even kill them over the many centuries. The individual's authority over his or her body and the institution's authority over anyone within that institution either can be used to puff up themselves rather than build up one another. So authority in and of itself does not automatically misuse knowledge. Take Jesus and, and his authority in our gospel lesson today. He visits the synagogue in Capernaum. And three things happen. He teaches. Then Jesus is interrupted by a man plagued with a demon. And then Jesus sends that demon out of that man. Mark explains the reaction of the crowd to all three things. Of Christ's teachings... Mark says they were astounded at what Jesus said. Why? For he taught them, Mark writes, as one having authority and not like the scribes do. What does that mean? Well, as we know from other things Jesus proclaimed, Jesus never covered what he said with, well, the oral law says you must do this or don't do that. Quoting the oral law all the time, like the scribes. Jesus never quoted the oral law but simply said, do this or don't do that, as if he were God himself. You know, we've been talking about the misuse of knowledge. Was Jesus misusing his superior knowledge by talking in this manner to people? No, indeed, because he was God in the flesh. Now, the way Jesus talked with divine authority drew the attention of the demon haunting one man in that room. The demon interrupted Christ's talk and complained, What are you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to rebuke us? I know you are the Holy One of God. Jesus then expels the demon, and the people react again. According to Mark, they say, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Here's the key, the connection running through my message today. What Jesus is teaching, the knowledge he is sharing, is the knowledge that does not puff himself up, but is the kind of knowledge that is spoken and used in a loving way, a knowledge that builds up. Perhaps Jesus, you know, we don't know what exactly he said in the synagogue, but he might have said something like, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. People who are poor in spirit sometimes feel plagued, you know. Or maybe he said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. People are grieving sometimes, and they feel haunted. Or maybe he said, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. People who feel meek sometimes feel overwhelmed. These are some of our modern demons, too. With authority to speak like this, Jesus gave people then, and Jesus gives people now real hope, and thus releases demons from people's lives and from the life of this particular man. Jesus does not, as we humans often do, reject that man. Christ has compassion on the man who was being mentally tortured by this demon. And because of that compassion for him, Jesus expels that demon. Christ's love for this man and his knowledge of how to free someone, free this man, 
We're both together useful there. So you see, it is through both knowledge and love together that the Spirit of God can work through disciples such as you and me. Written on this bookmark is a good example of knowledge and love working together. It is a definition of what King of Glory's parish nurses are called to do. It says, a parish nurse is a registered nurse. Now that means the nur- a nurse who is our parish nurse is a nurse who is devoted to the truth, the truth of medicine and the truth of science as a means of healing the body. But then it goes on. It says a registered nurse who first believes that spirituality plays an important role in the healing process and who secondly listens to the whole person, spirit, mind, and body when attending someone's health care needs. Notice there that the call to care, the call to use knowledge and not to puff oneself up or, or to bear, embarrass someone who is ill, but using that knowledge to understand people and lift up not only their physical bodies, but lifting up also their minds and spirits together. But when I talk of making sure that both love and knowledge work together, one might ask, why not just speak of love, Pastor? Why is knowledge equally important? Pastor, isn't love enough? Well, no, love isn't enough. If that love only comes from an individual's personal desires, let me use an obvious example. Let's say there is a parent and a 10-year-old child. The child runs up to the parent and says, I can fly. I'm going to jump off that cliff over there and fly today. If that parent feels that the only way to love his or her child is to say yes to this, to always affirm and support whatever the child wants to do, even though that parent person knows there's grave danger to the child jumping off that cliff, well, then we have a big problem. It's love without knowledge. Often the best way to love someone else is to utilize the best knowledge available in advising them. Jesus. Jesus knew how to expel demons. He knew that. Love needs knowledge, both earthly knowledge and spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge that we get directly from God through prayer, worship, studying God's word, and Christian conversation. Did you notice what Paul said at the end of our lesson today? He said to the Corinthians and to us, anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. That phrase, is known by God. I believe Paul is telling them and us that the most important thing in life is not what we know, but that God knows us. God knows us, loves us, and is always willing to convey both love and knowledge to us to share with and care for others. How does God do that? Two ways, through Jesus and through the Holy Spirit. Two Bible verses I will state to prove this. One, For who has known the mind of the Lord? But we have the mind of Christ. And number two, God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. So you see, we disciples, we children of God, should pray for the Spirit of Jesus to give us both love and the knowledge we need to be good servants to others. Let's go back to my children's message today. There we learned that more important than us knowing God is that God knows us. God knows us, has already saved us, and has chosen us. God knows our destiny, and God gives us what we need to serve him and serve others because we are his children. As Rosner once wrote, In human relationships, parents give their children their identity by knowing them. Indeed, a child's child's well-being depends less on knowing his or her parents than by being known 
by their parents. God, as perfect parents, as a perfect parent, provides ultimate purpose and identity to you and me. God loves you, and God knows you thoroughly. God has destined you to help him love the world. God has given you two questions to ask yourself in each and every situation you face. I am giving important knowledge. Am I also giving it in a loving way? I am giving important love. Am I also giving it in a knowledgeable way? In answering these two questions in our actions, we will grow as children of God. Amen. Now let us sing Yezu, Yezu. Please rise. I mentioned our offering earlier. I want to show you the online giving there on your screen, kogcarmel.org slash online dash giving dash pay me. Payments, not pay me. <laughs> that screen's funny. Anyway, uh, we're very thankful that you're giving to King of Glory's mission and ministry. And uh, we are thankful especially for your prayers of support. Now let us speak together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, wherever we are, let us pray together as a church. Lord, today, as we pray to you, we ask you to continue your work against the COVID virus through the work of so many different people. We pray that the rate of COVID's infection will continue to decrease, not increase. Please be with those who have this virus and give aid, O Lord, to those on the front lines who are helping those with COVID return to health especially also the population by way of the vaccines now available. Gracious Lord, you have given us minds in order to receive knowledge and then use it. You urged us to love you with all our hearts and minds. May we love you with our minds by using our minds to use knowledge wisely and love others in the most effective way possible. Help us not use knowledge to puff ourselves up, or put others down. We are thankful most of all that you have known each of us from the beginning, and yet you love us and have given us a pathway to service here on earth and an eternal destiny in heaven. O Holy Spirit, please be with those who are in need of your special healing, your great comfort, and your awesome strength. Be with those who are sick or injured, such as Lydia, Nick, Julie, Sue, Libby, Helen, Betty and Jim, Marion, Camilla, and Jane. We also pray for those who are grieving, such as Kay Nikki, who lost her sister Joan to COVID a few days ago. We pray also for all on our prayer list, especially for those in our hearts in these moments of silence. We have prayed for these dear ones, O Heavenly Father, and now we place them into your hands, trusting as always in your forgiveness and love, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We'll now turn to Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this and remember me and my ways. After supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant written in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this and remember me. The body of, oh, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. the blood of Christ shed for you.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in his grace and peace, now and forever. Amen. Now let us sing. Thank you. Thankful that you can join us for worship. And now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue to have our weekly devotion boost from the Bible on Thursdays at noon live which, like this worship service, you can see later as well on our website. Older services and devotions are now archived at the bottom of our webpage. We'll see you again at 10 a.m. next Sunday. May God be with you, and go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.